uh, and is protecting country against the fracking that is uh, destroying Aboriginal land up in Beedaloo and Northern Territory for the Nerdalindji people. My name is Nick Chesterfield. I'm a I'm the guest editor for this edition. I'm uh, Yana Nunga and Kulin Nations Heritage, and I've been a long-time grassroots journalist across uh, Black Australia and West Papua and across Melanesia uh, for a very long time. So I just wanted to welcome every one of our guests here, uh, especially Friends of the Earth uh, and everyone who has volunteered and contributed to this edition. This is absolutely fantastic. We've also got some incredible artwork and creation of art as a tool of resistance and as a tool of activism from Kerry Klim or Flash Black. I'm not sure if she's joining us tonight. We've got an article about um, on the disappearance of black women in the colony from Amy McGuire and also about regenerative songlines uh, from Alana Marsh. Um, so I want to acknowledge today that we're coming to you from the uns well, I'm coming to you from the unceded lands of the Jugger and Turrbal people on Mianjin. Uh, Chain Reaction magazine is produced on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations. I want to pay respects to the elders and warriors for country past, present, and those protectors of country continuing today to assert strong black sovereignty on land that always was and always will be Aboriginal land. So I just want to quickly get into some housekeeping for everyone. Uh, first and foremost, we have, uh, this is a issue that is going to be talking about protection of country and strong black resistance to extractivism. We are touching on the referendum, but the issue of the referendum is not central to this issue. So we are going to ask for open up to Q&A later, but we're going to ask that there is no, not so much of a focus on uh, the referendum. And certainly from the outset, this is going to be a safe spot for mob. So again, it's about showcasing strong black resistance to ex extractivism and the perspectives of frontline defenders of country. So any belittling of sovereign voices, and this is just a bit of housekeeping, will result in immediate expulsion from the event and we will hold people to account. So okay. just that out the way. Um, we've also got limited time tonight, obviously, so only the speakers will be speaking today. Uh, and if any other contributors to the edition want to join in, um, just put a thing up in chat and say hello and we'll let you in. Uh, we invite you, however, from now uh, to please submit some questions in the chat below. Uh, we're having a, a live chat thing so we can respond to the chat. Um, and we'll endeavour to get through as many as possible in the limited time we have. So uh, just one Sorry, technical difficulties, just one second. Uh, hang on. Second. So I just want to uh, continue into I launched straight into the dedication. Um, again, Mr. Wilson Jabata, uh, Joni's father, passed away on August 29 uh, quite suddenly, and he contributed an extremely powerful uh, contribution to this edition. So I want to dedicate this issue to the memory and spirit of Mr. Wilson Jabata, Jungai and Nudalinji leader. Mr. Wilson passed away just before we went to print. 
May your spirit rest in power with the ancestors and inspire new generations to lead the light to stop fossil fuel destruction on Aboriginal land. It is time that Mr Wilson's fight to protect country be taken up by all who walk in this land. Um, so I'd like to introduce Joni Wilson, who is uh, Mr Wilson's daughter. Um, if you could please say a few words about your dad and uh, the fight that he's given his life for. Hello, my name is Johnny Wilson. I'm a Yanyawa Garawa Karanji woman from Baolola. Um, my father is fighting for this country now that I'm here that you can see me in. Um, this country is very important to me and my people. We live off it every day. Um, the water is very, very important to us here, where that's where all the animals all feed from. That's where we eat from. Um, sorry, I'm just getting really emotional. Um, my dad is a very strong man and he fought very hard for this place. Um, he taught me and my kids that to don't ever give up to keep fighting and stop this poison that this gas that we see everywhere at night that looks like candles. Less and less birds we see, less turkeys, goannas. You know, this this bush, this country that we live on, it's it's a big supermarket for us. This is where we get our food. My kids can't don't like the food in the shop. They like bush feed. If this is all poisoned, then I can't continue on to collect food like my ancestors did, my dad did, and I am with my children. I carry law through this country. The Gujiga, the SMAP song line through this country. I sing it, I dance it, not also here, this is my father's side, but on my mother's side, on the coast and the sea. So when the poison is spread up the Beedaloo Basin, it runs down at wet season time, comes down here past my father's country, and then down to my mother's country, and down to the ocean. So as you can see, it's very important here that we keep this gas thing away and to keep fighting and encouraging our young ones too to, to know the importance of, of our land and of our culture and water. It's not only gonna infect, affect us mob, but it's gonna affect everybody, every human being, every animal, cattle, station workers, everyone. This, this water is just so sacred to us It'll kill us. We're nothing without it, you know? I'm sorry. Joni, we've just lost your audio. You just press mute, sis. There we go. Um, how long do I have left to talk? As long as you need, but we'll try and keep it a few more minutes. <laughs> This is, um, if you can see, this is where my dad lived. This is the place here. We, we can't get video, but yeah. Uh, you can't get video. But this place that he fought for, you know, like, um, he fought until he, he died. Fighting, trying to put this place and hunt these gas people away. You know, I was taught in the school that anything from under the earth is supposed to stay under the earth. I got taught that by not only my school teachers at school, but also my grandfather that didn't read and write. 
he also taught me that this country is special and we're going to look after it. Yeah. Okay, we just I don't lost. know what else to say. I don't know what else to say right now. Um, I'm trying my best. I'm still trying to get over the fact that my dad's gone. Um, me and my family, we moved out of here now to show these mobs that we're not playing around, that we're going to sit on country and live on country. Whether they're gassing around, around us or not, then now we're going to sit here and show them that we live here. I buried my dad on this country. We don't want poison here. Yeah. Jenny, we've lost you again. You're on mute. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Hello. Um, I like to say that um, to the people that are struggling with the same thing that I am, with the animals, whales, whatever it is, from me to you, mob, keep fighting, don't give up, and keep educating our young people, our young kids, and teaching them, showing them maybe be more educational around our festivals, around here, our culture, learn about our culture, and know that our culture is very important to us here. We still practice it here. The cult, the land and our culture, it all connects, the water, everything, you know, it all connects. When I'm in the city, when I used to work in, in the city, long way from here, I used to get really sick. And then when I came back on country, all that sickness, stress, all went away. This land, it connects to us as human beings. We put our feet to this land. It talks to us. It heals us. This land is our spirit. It's alive. Thank you. We've lost you again, Jeremy. Yeah, um, I don't know how long I got to how uh, much more lo longer than I had talked for, but you know, I brought up in the bush, born and raised in the bush. They sent me away to get education in the city. And no matter where you are, water is important. No matter where you are, what place, what country, you get taught that water is important, you know? Country. I get sad when I watch all these all the people from America, all my you know, countrymen over there, that they don't have their country like how we got our country, makes me sad. And it's good to see that I have support everywhere around the world with the same problem that people are fighting the same way that I am. It's good to see that I have a lot of support out there. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I want to. I want to thank you for for continuing to stand up, and you know, thank you for continuing the fight of your father and all the Nerdle NG mob. Um, I just want to ask, uh, Journey, what, where, where to from now for Nerdle NG? For Nerdle NG. The fight is still going. We're still, we're still going to keep going. I'm on the way for, to a Neurolingy meeting on the weekend. And going to keep going as if my father's alive, talking inside me, from me. I already have one of my children already interested in following my footsteps and the grandfather's footsteps. Neurolingy is going to keep going and we're going to get more bigger. And I'm going to get more 
members to join all over this region here. And us, thanks. Well, we hope that uh, people watching today and greenies across the country and mob everywhere can stand strong with you. I really appreciate I hope this. So because I really hope so because this, this land, this great land that we have, that Mother Nature has created for us all, this land is for all of us, everyone, animals, everyone, you know? We gotta stand up all together around the world, all together and stand up and stop this poisoning, this poisoning and polluting our earth. It's just no good. Us Aboriginal people, we, ha we, we used to live off this calendar We've now this calendar to now when we collect food. We don't have a calendar anymore because the climate change, the climate is, is different. We have long dry seasons or, or too quick dry seasons or no wet seasons or big mob wet season. We don't know when the flowers are going to start or when it's going to stop. We mm. have to stop this now because it's, it's, I'm only 38 years old and I've seen too, too many, too many changes in this, in this bush, in this country where I'm from, the Yanyawagadawa country, too many changes, too many animals, missing plants. It's just unbelievable. And we just need to be, stand strong and keep fighting for this, keep this poison away from us because people like me, we still live in the bush here. We still eat off the bush and we still, continue to live here. This is our home. Thank you everyone for watching me. Thank you, Joni. Uh, look, I, I just want to remind everyone uh, that we have, that there's a request for donations uh, for Mr. Wilson's family uh, to cover Sorry, business, and also to cover ongoing support. Uh, the link is in the chat. The link is in the magazine. The link is on the Chain Reaction website, um, Strong Black Resistance. Uh, but if people can go to paypal.me forward slash Johnny Wilson Senior SNR. Um, and the link will be posted a few times in the chat. So thank you. Thank you, Joni. Um, and before I move to Bo, I just want to remind uh, people that uh, we are live now for the uh, Strong Black Resistance issue, uh, and you can find that at bo.org.au forward slash CR146 and that uh, link will go up and it's gone up right there. Um, <laughs> and uh, also encourage everyone to subscribe to Chain Reaction so we can do this more often. And also uh, on that site, if you can tip in a donation uh, today from the First Nations Contributors Fund, uh, that will also uh, help more these additions, these black takeovers of chain reaction to occur and where we can platform uh, strong voices. So uh, I just want to move on and invite Bo to talk about uh, his article and uh, the interview that he did uh, about historicity of black resistance to extractivism and how it is faring today. So, Bo. <clears throat> Yama, Bo Spiram, Gumari Kuma, Marawari. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for putting this together, uh, Nick, and uh, definitely a big shout out to the mob on tonight from different mm. parts of the country and excited to hear your stories and, you know, hopefully find a way where we can all work together as well. Um, and a big hello to everybody else that's on here too. Um, yeah, so me and you know, Nick uh, caught up 
And uh, a bit of bit of background about myself. Um, I, for the best part, like ten years, I've been involved in community radio and media up here in Brisbane. Um, worked for uh, Murray Radio, like the the black radio station up here in Brisbane. Um, you know, have got the chance to host uh, Let's Talk, a really good talkback program. Um, and the last three years, I've uh, been doing my own podcast called Frontier War Stories. It looks at the first 140 years of conflict and resistance between our people um, and white followers got here. Um, <clears throat> And, you know, we, in the podcast, look at um, a whole lot of things that happened, you know, obviously the massacres and, and the warriors and the perpetrators, but also the tactics and, you know, uh, that we use, you know, how we communicated through that period to survive as well. Um, look at, you know, Indigenous incarceration back then as well and, you know, Black deaths in custody, but then also looking also at... Um, you know, what they wanted to do when they got here, you know, which was um, find resources and exploit uh, the land as much as possible. And that's what they did. Um, our mob, you know, in, in many parts of this country held, you know, um, an amazing resistance um, and held, you know, one, one thing that's pretty cool, like uh, the tactics that mob used um, was, you know, it's described as guerrilla warfare. And also economic warfare as well, which was amazing, you know. Um, mob very quickly understood that uh, the crops that they were uh, growing and the cattle that they were sort of raising and herding um, was of significance to them. So if they stole them them cattle and, you know, took them 100 kilometres away and, you know, kept it for themselves or, or ate it or, or, let it, or, or let it go or killed them or... Burnt the crops. They understood that, you know, um, uh, that this was a very important tactic uh, to them, and it, it would definitely, you know, uh, hit them where it hurt. Um, it was early as like you know, seventeen eighty eight or seventeen seventy when they first got here, sailing along the east coast. Uh, mob was aware um, uh, of of their nature. Um, and also were um, communicating with each other. Like one amazing thing that uh, was happening during this period when Cook was sailing up the East Coast is uh, mob were sort of uh, lighting beacons on uh, significant points along the, along the coastline. And this went from around like Victoria all the way up to the tip of Queensland to, the, to where uh, the mob in the Torres Straits could see this uh, and there's a mad yarn where um uh, a couple of uncles up in the Torres Straits talk about how Cook never really got off or anybody from the Endeavour never got off uh, the Endeavour and onto what is Possession Island where they planted the flag. Um, he goes, uh, if you look at their uh, painting that they that they did of of the event, it's uh, of mainland trees, not of our island trees. And he goes, we were all waiting on different islands. So as soon as these fellas jump off, we would, you know, gonna gonna definitely say hello and 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 and, and do the business. Um, you know, and um uh f like for myself, like for back down home on Gumaray country, um it's it's old like volcanic sort of country, so it's you know, very, very uh, rich soil. Um and so early on, uh, these white fellows they knew um, that this country was good for a whole range of different um, farming, um, you know, raising cattle, you know, rustling cattle to <clears throat> um, owning land to produce a whole range of different uh, resources from it as well. As early as like, so. It only took about 50 years to, from, from, from 1788 to get up uh, to Gumari country. Uh, and as early as 1839 or 1838 in December, uh, they went on, on a, on a month-long um, uh, um, journey to sort of capture Gumari warriors who was raiding um, um, stations and... and uh, as well, so there are about like five to six different warriors who was going down 
uh, raiding camps and uh, uh, causing um, terror and, uh, to these, you know, uh, <clears throat> invaders who were, you know, destroying the land. And um, as early as, you know, so, so that went on for a month, you know, they, um, they, they had to change their tactics, one, because of how far it was from the Sydney colony. Uh, so they, this was the first time they enlisted horses uh, to go out onto country um, and also uh, the use of, you know, like, um, uh, um, what do you call them, uh, squatters and then also other farmers as well. They, they pretty much hired them and then taught them how to hunt, how to kill, how to massacre, you know, uh, and a lot of the soldiers at that time, they were a uh, soldier of like the Napoleonic War. So like they were very seasoned, especially the generals and like, you know, the, the ones that were in high command. So this was the native mount of, uh, the, uh, the mounted police um, and under the watchful eye of Major Nunn, who uh, was a sort of leading officer in this pursuit. Uh, and they found, they stumbled upon a camp. They don't know if they actually caught the warriors uh, about 20 kilometres outside of Maureen in uh, New South Wales. Um, and there's a yarn about uh, how many uh, massacre, how many blackfellas died within this sort of massacre period. Uh, it goes from up to like 150 to, uh, to 50 to 25, down to five. Like, um, it was a very, it was definitely a very big turning point for Gumroy fellas back home uh, because this was yeah their initial sort of um for the next five uh months five to six months uh though they a lot of the partialist and a lot of the squatters went on hunting parties so um so in between waterloo creek and mile creek there was a whole uh a lot of massacres uh, that that took place in different parts of of Gomorrah country, and, and mind you, these so from Moree to 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 Bingara, where they have the memorial where the uh, Mile Creek happened. It's only like two hour drive, hour and a half drive, and in between that, you know, they say there was up to like five to six different massacres, you know, and hundreds of mob um, at a time uh, being massacred as well. Um, you know, uh, back home, they call it the food bowl of Australia. Um, you know, so you, where there's the, like I mentioned before, there's different sort of industries out there making a shitload of money off of, uh, the back of, you know, our mob being forcibly removed, uh, off of country. Um, at the moment, you know, the biggest industries, you know, uh, would be mining, you know, several mining companies that have interests, uh, as well as active, um, pending active mines and pending mines as well. So there is um, open cut mines. We have underground mines, and then also just recently, Santos want to want approval to go ahead with um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, 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 gas gas field, so uh, gas pipelines. Uh, the first proposal that um, um, that Santos uh, want is to have eight, 850 gas wells in the Pilliga Forest, a uh, very important part of country. Uh, this part of country um, holds significance, one, because you know, there's, there's certain plants and wildlife uh, that live there that can only be found there. Um, there's a certain turtle um uh, uh back down home that's very important that we have a yarn for as well um uh, uh um and in the past as well you know when, when, when there's been camp set up uh, down home um you know there, there was uh spills as well um and and, and it's crazy because like when water touches these spills like it expands uh, and gets bigger and bigger uh, it's definitely poisonous stuff that none that nobody wants you know, in their in, in their backyards and definitely on country um you know and this is only the first phase of uh fracking i think the second phase only up to 1200 um so at the moment we're still in court uh with the native title body still in court uh round with santos uh, it is up in the federal court at the moment. I, I, I haven't heard anything back about uh, that decision. 
that was like maybe a month or two ago. Um, but, you know, all these things um, play hand in hand, you know, because if we aren't here, then they get a continent for free. Uh, and if they have this continent, then they're going to do as they please with, um, uh, you know, the machine that they have and the land that, you know, they stole from us. You know, it's very vital that um, our mob are centred when it comes to, you know, caring for country, but um, and also knowing, you know, the best solutions to protect country as well. Um, and, you know, uh, that's something that, you know, we have been doing, you know, and, and still continue to do in, in different parts of this country as well. Um, and um, it's definitely, you know, uh, empowering knowing and hearing from other mob that are talking about resistance in different forms, whether it's, um, you know, protecting country from mining or whether it's, you know, uh, against police brutality and black deaths in custody or if it's, you know, challenging these different systems that we have in place that uphold, you know, um, laws that, you know, um, incarcerate our mob at a high rate or incarcerate our young people at a high rate as well. Um, you know, and these fellows get away with it. You know, we're um, definitely um, the, the reminder that they don't want to have, you know, and it's, it's essential that, you know, allies or supporters, you know, um, are there with us on this sort of movement and journey and understand, you know, the direction that they should go as well, because especially the environmental movement, um, mob have been locked out of that for quite a while, uh, for quite a long time. Um, and, you know, we don't just exist in uh, one corridor, you know, like um, we black followers and we have many different, we wear many different hats and have many different struggles that we uh, have to face as well. Um, you know, I'm sure the yarns that the mob are talking tonight are just sort of one of the things that, you know, we find in our communities uh, and back home on country as well. That's seven minutes. Yeah, a bit over, but hey, all good. Oh, um, that's all right. I think we'll keep it free flowing if everyone's okay. Um, and just to remind people that we do have this on uh, recording, so it will be available online uh, if you do have to bugger off um, or stick around. Um, thank you, Bo. That's, yeah, it's been an absolute learning experience. Um, yeah, going through, you know, putting, helping you put this together and learning about, you know, the, the constant unending resistance. And, you know, it never ends. It just transforms. It just keeps going. Uh, look, I'll, so thank you. And I'll open this up to uh, Yaren, Yaren Cousins Bundle, Gunditsch uh, Mara and Jabwurrung Woman, uh, Ocean and Land. Tree Defender. Uh, I want to thank you, Yaram, for your amazing, powerful talk. And I just want to, uh, we're a bit restricted, obviously, by space in the uh, edition. So we've I just finished uh, producing a, a podcast and Bear with us, it's it's almost three hours long, um, but an incredible um, description of everything that goes on on Yaren's country, uh, both land and sea, really in depth. So I really encourage everyone to go onto the uh, live website and uh, have a listen to that at your leisure as well. Um, so Yaren, welcome. Hey, hello. Can everyone hear me? Um, yeah, thank you so much to um, Friends of the Earth um, for putting this on and, yeah, asking me to be a part of it. It's a really um, honour to, you know, be connected to something that's um, so strong um, with really strong mob. Um, and, yeah, just a you know, special shout-out to... Um, Friends of the Earth and Nick and, you know, all the crew that put this together. Um, but I just wanted to start by just paying respects to um, the country 
where I'm yarning from. Um, I'm over on Peak Wurrung country in um, western side of Gunditch Mara country. And, um, yeah, along the coast here on my sea country. And um, it's, yeah, really fitting to what I'm going to yarn about tonight. Um, and, yeah, thanks to Brother Bo and um, the other mob as well. Um, it's a, yeah, real honour to, you know, be able to be having these yarns and having it with mob as well as, um, you know, everyone in the chat tonight. Um, I'm just sitting here um, breastfeeding my daughter, Ware. <laughs> so, yeah, I may have to turn my um, camera off and put her down in a mini. Um, but, yeah, all good. Um, as, as, you know, mob, we adapt to, you know, all the things that we have to and have that, um, you know, learn to have that resilience in, you know, the fights that we're part of. So, um yeah, my name's Yaren, for people who don't know, and I'm a Gunditjmara, you and Bidra woman, and um, just wanted to yarn with you tonight about, you know, why it's so important to to protect country and fight for country and, you know, that it's the greatest honour and privilege of my life, um, even though... Um, weirdly, you know, I wish that we didn't have to um, to fight the way that we are and to fight the fights that we are against, you know, the um, hideous side of the colony and, um, yeah, the mining giants from overseas. Um, but, yeah, I'm a um, 38-year-old mother of four and... Um, fighting some of the biggest gas giants in the world um, that have got their eyes um, on our Gunditjmara sea country. Um, so we're talking about um, gas extraction and seismic blasting to find gas. Um, but sadly, we're also talking about, um, you know, what's known as a green, um, green power um, the wind power and these giant massive wind turbines that they want to um, place along whale song line country as well. Um, so there's our our sacred, um, there's a place um, not far from here um, that is Gunditch Mara's Cemetery of Souls um, or Cemetery of Spirits and it's our gateway, part of our gateway to the spirit world. And it's a little plateau island just off the coast of Port Ferry, in between Port Ferry and Portland. And it's known to us as Deanma. Um, it's known, its other name is Lady Julia Percy Island. But, you know, we, <laughs> we reclaimed um, our language and along with that language reclamation, we reclaimed some of the place names on country. So um, a lot of people know it as Dean Ma now. And um, the even the local fishermen in Port Ferry and Portland, um, they give Dean Ma a bit of a berth when they're going past it, you know. Um, they go right around it. And, um, yeah, it's really known, um, you know, for a bit of a seal colony an old um, whaling, um, you know, believe it or not, um, cleared and put rabbits on it and, you know, back in the day when the, the whalers and the sealers were um, in the area and, um, yeah, some of the, you know, really bad atrocities that happened to this really, really um, amazing and sacred uh, burial place. Um, Spirit Pathway Island that now there's two different companies that are looking to put giant wind turbines on our sacred country. And, um, you know, that's caused a bit of an uproar with our mob. Um, but also the whole length of our sea country is... Um, 
they've got eyes ready to carve it up um, through the gas companies and the wind farms. Um, so, yeah, there's quite a fight, um, you know, for this whale songline country. Um, there's, you know, so much more um, there, of course, um, you know, dolphins, seals, the little fairy penguins. Um, people might have heard about the um, the Marima dogs um, in the movie Oddball. Um, they protect the little penguins. Um, well, that's in Warrnambool. Um, that's on Gunditjmara country. And, you know, they're sacred little species um, that, you know, are endemic to our, our area. Um, and, you know, along with the, you know, weedy sea dragon and the southern nautilus shell and so many, um, you know, amazing um, biodiverse ecosystems call home to the Southern Ocean. And, yeah, this is, you know, what we're trying to protect and, um, you know, honour in, in this time um, for the next generations um, into the future. And um, we're, yeah, sort of hit a bit of a wall when it comes to... Um, the cultural heritage legislation and the native title bodies and, you know, who speaks for country and, and who doesn't um, or who they have to get permission off. Um, but really, you know, we, we say no to all seismic blasting um, and the mining exploration. Um, as Bo mentioned, there's, you know, mining is one of the biggest um, threats to country all over, um, you know, our sacred land and the land of the rainbow serpent. All of our different mobs, I think, are fighting um, mining in one way or another, whether it's gold mining, sand mining, gas mining, you know. Um, and as the sister girl said earlier, um, you know, water, the fresh water is at major risk here. Um, so I think, you know, that most people generally, you know, would know the significance of water, but it's also, you know, the, the fresh water and the salt water are those living entities. They're their own, you know, spiritual beings and, and forces of nature um, that, you know, are alive. And so, you know, that's speaking to those dreaming, different dreaming sites on country. And, yeah, it's just real, um, a really hard fight to be able to get people to understand that we're not separate from our country. Um, you know, we live in modern times, sure, but we have ancient blood and, you know, the blood and bones of our old people um, literally made this country um, all over. And, you know, that um, it, it's an honour to be able to, you know, carry that um, connection and that cultural strength and identity forward into the future. Um, but, yeah, we need help of, you know, of everyone listening here tonight um, to help support our fight and, um, yeah, get behind, you know, First Nations that are defending country. I think it's of the utmost important, um, you know, time for people to get behind First Nations and if there's ever going to be, um, you know, a cause or an issue um you know, regarding humankind, I think this is this is the one to um, yeah get on board with. Um, you know, that fight for country, whatever that is. You know, fighting a Dani mine. You know, saving um, you know the forests on Gumbangi country. Like, there's there's so many um, different fights, and yeah, um, I'm also the the founder of um, Southern Ocean Protection Embassy Collective. And um, that's a collective for everyone to come and join and be part of that story. Um, 
and you know join the fight to keep our the blue lung um of our planet you know our oceans um clean and to make people more aware of you know what um actually you know that means to be able to protect sea country because you know it's pretty pretty vast out there um and you know there's a lot of pollution in the ocean including ships and the ship noise um the noise from like all the different traffic um on the ocean has only increased over the years and you know now we're having to defend the last um the last recorded southern right whale birthing and calving area along um you know the southern coastline along Gunditjmara country um against seismic blasting and um what that actually is is um you know these sonic sound waves and sonic booms that you know uh are like a a jet plane a, you know they're loud um you know deafening um and basically if you're in the water in the area um you know it's it can kill um so if that if it can kill humans um you know that sound wave imagine what it does to our ocean kin um you know the whales and all the different um sonar um animals in the ocean um it goes all the way from the surface to under the ocean floor um and that's how they determine where there's different um gas pockets and the size and area of those gas pockets um through seismic blasting and um what that actually does is can hemorrhage a whale um so their ear can hemorrhage and it can destroy their ability to communicate and navigate along their ancient song lines um you know where they bring their babies back to give birth every year so um just wanted to yeah let it, let that kind of sink in um that you know it's it's a huge fight um but it's one of these really amazing um you know cultural teachings and connections that you know is ancient um it's from a term that us gundich mara use which is called kurtnapi and kurtipi and it means all the time being and all the time resting so you know ancient deep time time immor- immemorial this is where the whale songline comes from and this is the cultural significance of why we have to protect it it helps shape the world and it's where it's part of the dreaming story of where the gunditch mara people come from so yeah these family in in the salt water um you know they're part of our blood as well and uh one of our main you know foundations of of what i was taught and us gunditch mob you know we and my yawn mob too um who are also connected to the whales um one of those foundations of of culture and connection is you know you look after your family you listen to your family you honor and respect your family and um no one gets left behind so you know um part of this fight is is you know trying to honor those cultural responsibilities that um I've been given and that have been passed on to me um but also um you know help educate as many people as we can 
about the significance of this, um, you know, amazing um, oceanic songlines and and sea country that, you know, um, it's it's vital that it survives because it can affect the whole world if it dies and if it's broken. So, yeah, that's um, my yarn. And, um, yeah, I hope to see as many um, Victorian crew at our um, rally coming up in Octo on October the 22nd down in Warrnambool um, at, at the Warrnambool Breakwater at 2 p.m. And maybe we can put one of the little um, – I'll try and add one uh, the poster into the chat. Um, it's also on the back cover of um, the issue. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> see that. Awesome. Yeah, so, Solid. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, of course. But, yeah, just, you know, to be able to share, um, you know, part of that story and why it's so significant. Um, of course, everything else um you know, connecting all the song lines and one is not more important than the other. Um, but, you know, we have, um, we're kind of dire straits. We need to make sure that these mob, um, these, you know, greedy, hungry pirates of our future um, get gone out of um, our sea country and out of all the other mobs country as well. So, um, yeah, thank you, everyone, for listening. Excellent. Thank you so much, Yaron. Um, just uh, let you know that uh, Bo's had to step out as well. Um, yeah, so we'll all have to join in the Q&A in his <laughs> absence. But thank you so much, Yaron. I yeah, really hope that everyone uh, absolutely steps up and supports uh, the work on the uh, for SOPEC and also, you know, continue fighting for the trees up on Jatwaran country as well. Um, I'd like to hand it over to Nana, to Janetta Quinbait, uh, Barkindji journalist extraordinaire and uh, protector of river country. Um, and yes. Thank you and welcome, and thanks for your amazing contribution. Thank you, Nick, um, and hello and welcome to everybody that's tuned in tonight, and thanks so much for taking a bit of your time to listen to our stories and to support the work that we've put into this edition. I'm so incredibly proud to be featured alongside the likes of Yaren and Bo and Amy and Carrie's artwork and everybody else who contributed Um definitely will be a private place on my bookshelf when that comes. Uh, so as Nick said, I'm a Mali and Yapa Barkindji woman. My piece was about saving, save our darling Barker is what I called it, which um, is probably a tagline that I kind of pinched from some of my family members who did a art exhibition and have, I've got mob kind of advocating in so many ways for our water. Um, you know, I've got a cut, a, cousin that's named herself after the Barker and raps about, you know, land and right for mob as well as other things. Um, you know, my uncle has just finished doing a, um, the Forgotten River, the, the Barker, which was incredible. Um, so, yeah, for those who aren't familiar, the Barker is the Darling River. Um, the Barker is what we traditional owners, Bark and G mob, call the river. Um, you know, there is different mob along the river. It actually starts up on Niampa country between Burke and Bree, um, but runs through Wilcania, Tilpa, Luth, Menindi, um, Prinkari. I'm hoping I haven't missed any. I'll just double check. But yeah, so um, my article I guess I just really wanted to bring to everyone else's attention some of the things that I've been made aware of um whilst not just researching this story uh but obviously you know my family are all 
doing what they can in their own ways as well. So I, I am a former journalist. I uh, started my media career with ABC um, out in Alice Springs of all places in Bantua. And then I've, you know, since then I've been with SBS and ITV, um, won a Wolfley scholarship, went with 10 news first and junkie for a little. Um, I've also just done a brief stint as a media advisor for Senator Lydia Thorpe. So my work has, you know, taken me around many parts of the country, around many mob from different areas. And the funny thing is, no matter where I go, we're all fighting the same fight all over this country. You know, I think every person we've heard speak tonight has in some way touched on and, you know, Garen said it, what is life, which is literally on my phone case, but it's the truth. Water is life. And no matter where you come from or what your background is, black, white, we all need water to survive. Um, I know the Great Artesian Basin, which is up underneath Gomeroy country and underneath Queensland up there, which is one of the you know greatest water sources in the world, um, is most definitely under threat if they start fracking that and you know contaminating those waters. Um, we've already seen it with our rivers in New South Wales. I think all mob who lived along the river have experienced drought. You know, we saw some towns having to ship, you know, bottles of water in to drink and to, to bath. And, you know, it's um, it's catastrophic. And, you, you know, I'm not sure how many people have seen the pictures of the mass fish kills that happen in our rivers when because because of a lack of oxygen, because of a lack of wood, because of the blue-green algae blooms. Um, and this all comes down to over-extraction. And yes, drought is a natural, you know, natural occurrence. It would happen every year regardless, but drought does not completely dry up rivers and kill fish en masse the way that it's been happening. This is, this is human interference. Um, we have had a Federal Royal Commission on the Murray Darling, Darling Basin and you know what do we do and how do we take care of it. Um, John Howard introduced the Water Act in 2007 which saw the federal government handed control basically over water and I remember interviewing Uncle Badger Bates as an NITV news reporter and him saying to me um, about telling me about how they negotiated with the government for years for, you know, land rights. And as he says, you know, they gave us back the land, but they took our water. And that's been an issue ever since. You know, I was, I was incredibly proud to be able to do that interview and tell my family's story. Likewise, as I am being able to have it published in this incredible edition. Um, but it doesn't, you know, nothing really takes away the hurt, the devastation. We all, like I said, we all rely on water. Um, and this is something that my family and our people have been dealing with now for, you know, well, well, well over a decade. Um, like I said, Federal Royal Commission, and it's something that a lot of other communities, you know, are probably going to be dealing with as well if they have, you know, frackings, frackings different, but it's still the same in, in terms of it's going to, it's devastation for, for mob, for country, like Yaren said, for the ecosystems that rely on the water and everything that it feeds, that feeds off the river, the barker. Um, so yeah, incredibly proud to put this piece. We've had rallies in Wilcannia because of the over extraction. Um, I know, I don't know who remembers a couple of years back, you know, they talk of Cubby Station, the big, and the, the big cotton farmers and the, the water that they take and they take thousands, you know, these megaliters, it's not just little bits of water it's yeah it's it's phenomenal um but the you know water trading is another thing that has just completely 
it, it's corrupt, like a lot of things that the government do. I'm not sure who remembers Watergate, but um, we saw, I think it was Barnaby, Barnaby Joyce and Angus Taylor in a lot of hot water and still wear that reputation for Watergate. Um, there were some few licenses there that, you know, look a bit dodgy. Angus Taylor's family actually invests in the water market. Um, you know, I, I won't go too much further into that, but there's so many examples of government corruption. Um, and our people are the ones who pay the price. Um, our environment pays the price. Our countries pay. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, really, really proud to bring this issue to you guys. I have um, finished it off with a list of, you know, reasons why the government can't be trusted and they continue to prove why they can't be trusted and there's just like a a huge list there of ways that they've completely destroyed our country or, you know, imprisoned our young people. Just complete destruction and dispossession of our, our culture. Um, and since I wrote that, there'd be more. There'd be more to add to that list. Um, I don't even think, you know, we saw Rio Tino had to shut down operation just last week because of destroying another sacred site. Like, meanwhile, we have the country decked out in, yes, that is sponsored by Rio Tino. So forgive me if I do seem a little bit, you know, angry when we touch on the referendum part. I know Nick said we're not going to go too fully into that, but I am a staunch no voter. And that is because the government cannot be trusted. And I've got to say one thing that um, really hit home for me when I was writing this article. And thanks, Nick, for pushing me to do it because I hadn't written an article in a little while. Um, I get a little bit over editors who like to com just completely whitewash my work. It's happened my whole career and I just stopped writing. Um, so thank you for giving me back that little writing buzz. The, the one thing that really funny um so i was looking at the report from the royal commission into the murray darling basin and this report is like 750 pages long or something like that and i was like scrolling scrolling trying, i don't know what i knew i was didn't know what i was looking for i knew i was looking for something and anyways it was like I was guided to find this it stopped I stopped I scroll scroll I got to about 450 and I stopped and on that page was the evidence that my uncle Badger has committed which is it was crazy of all pages for me to stop on out of 750 and in his evidence he spoke about how the government had manufactured these maps of the Barker which is the Darling River and the tribal lines of the traditional owners along the river so they knew who to consult with in each area because they were community consult consultation like they like to pretend they consult with us when they don't um and my uncle said how the tribal lines were not properly reflected so they basically just made up their own maps tribal lines weren't properly reflected so in some areas they were dealing with people that weren't even the traditional owners of, of that that country but because that their map said they were that's what they went off and that's just honestly one example of ways that they will find to either silence our mob or exclude our mob and and the biggest thing i think that really rang for me was in this complete you know where people have put their submissions in they have, it's, a, it's like a broken record. It's like reading, it's like deja vu. So I'm reading and all the mob are like, you know, consultations were, you know, they were either invite only, that we weren't told about them, we didn't know about them. Um, it is like deja vu from this Voice to Parliament campaign because that's exactly what we're hearing from the mob. We weren't consulted, we didn't know. And there's even, like I said, examples of where the government have actually manufactured complete inaccuracies um so like i said that's just one example and yeah so like i don't want to get too much into the referendum because i know nick said that that's not the focus here but that's obviously been the focus of my last few months of my life i get hit up about it every single day um but yeah it, it, it's crazy the 
the examples of um mob being silenced and it's actually crazy how no matter what report you read no matter what case you look at no matter what it is if it's to do with mob you will find these similarities every single time and it's to the point now where it's it's frustrating like I want to pull my hair out watching all these people yes yes you know hand on heart vote yes because you know otherwise it's going to be this big step backwards like step backwards from what this voice to parliament is not self-determination for us it gives the parliament the right to speak for us we don't even know who's going to be on that voice they can put white people in there for all we know I don't support it I'm sorry and that's all I'll say about it but I was absolutely just completely I I won't say shocked because I wasn't shocked I wasn't surprised at all but it was like this just yeah it's it's glaring but like I said thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in to listen to our stories this evening and who has purchased a copy if you haven't go ahead it's absolutely beautiful um I can't wait till my printed copy comes in the mail absolutely honored couldn't be more proud to be writing amongst you know some of these amazing amazing warriors who fight for our countries and our waters and our skies um to our allies please just continue to listen don't speak over more elevate where you can you know um and you know with this with this referendum especially please listen there are lots and lots and lots of grassroots voices out there that do not support this. I will tell you a very, very brief list of people who do support it though. Leo Tino, BHP, Woodside, PWC, Qantas, Woolworths and Coles, NAB, Westpac, ANZ, and that's just a really small list. There's heaps more. Um, you know, Coles and Woolworths were the only two allowed open during the pandemic. So they made billions, yet they're continuing to price gouge our people. We are living in poverty. We are all struggling to survive right now. You know, Qantas, how many billions have they rotted and ripped off? And yet, what's his name? Gone back to Ireland with millions in his pocket. Like, Joyce, by me, not fun, you know, Alan Joyce. Anyway, so PWC, Waters, Woodside, Country Destroyers, BHP, Rio Tino, Country Killers, you know. NAB, Westpac, ANZ, bank fees through the roof, people losing their homes. What more proof? West do you Farmers. Need? West, mm. like the, the list is really, really big. That, like I said, that's only a Vanguard and BlackRock as well. Yeah. So Which, please, yeah. really, really say your choices. Don't just vote because you don't want to be aligned with racists because I'm telling you, people who destroy country and price gouge our people and force them further into poverty, they are racist. That is racist. So please, you know, I know the media has painted this like every yes vote, every no voter is a racist and this and that. Let me tell you, I worked in the media. I don't anymore. There's a reason for that. They don't listen to our people. They never mm. will allow us to tell our stories the way we want to. That's why I stopped writing because they kept changing it on me. I wrote for Nick because he didn't change, he didn't change my work. He just, you know, never tell it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but anyways, thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate you all being here this evening. Thank you so very much, Janetta. I really appreciate it. Um, and I suppose I just wanted to point everyone to the fact that I've also, in addition to editing this issue, I've also done a contribution myself uh, on the need to establish a sovereign black journalism capacity free from interference. And so where we can continue to write and do real hard investigations into environmental resistance led by blackfellas, led by Indigenous people and First Nations people around the region and around the world, including West Papua, Papua New Guinea, right across Pacifica, but focusing on strong black stories of resistance and to get this past the, the white wall of media in this country, the and excuse my language, but the colonial shit fuckery of every single newsroom of 
so many people in their puffer jackets and RM Williams boots who are just standing around talking about the only black fellas that they knew was when they were jackarooing, you know. So I encourage people to read, you know, what I've put together. And, and again, I mean, there's been this whole thing of pop down, shout down violence against black fellas uh, with the referendum. And, you know, as journalists, we really, really don't, you know, we, we're not meant to have an, uh, an opinion about this. We're meant to be objective. But the whole point that we've got is, as journalists, our job is to predicate the voice of the powerless and the people who don't have existing platforms. It's not to favour on both sides the voices of people who already have every single platform available to them. So, I mean, this is partly why, you know, the opportunity to elevate strong voices in this issue was just such an incredible, like, yep, I'm going to grab this. And I'm really, you know, <laughs> if, if we had a bigger budget, if we had a bigger time frame, and also if there wasn't so much exhaustion and spiritual like you know spiritual injury on people who just were just so traumatized by you are a racist if you vote no you are a racist unless you support this Rio Tinto funded referendum it's just like we're black you know I'm sure people have seen names around like you know, shut up, you know, we, we're black. We don't have to, we don't have to trust the good intentions of the white colony because it's shown itself over almost 230 years and it just can't be trusted. And every part of who supports the voice is people who are, you know, destroying our land. Every, every single part of our land. So, you know, to ensure that we do have that capacity to tell those stories, to tell the stories like, um, you know, something that I want to work closely with everyone on, but particularly, uh, you know, in talking with Amy Maguire, who's done the incredible article about on the disappearance of black women in the colony, uh, having a real-time mechanism through journalism, through witness journalism, through training mob in communities how to do journalism and how to work with black journalists to get who did what to whom, when, where, how and why, source evidence of whatever is happening on the ground out in real time. So, you know, we need lots of support for that. We need, we need money. We need... Uh, equipment, you know, donations of equipment, of camera gear. We need mentorship from white allied journalists and, you know, documentarians and all sorts of people who genuinely want to work and walk in a way that supports environmental resistance and, you know, defence of country uh, led by the mob who live there. So, um now, yeah, so again, um, yeah, just <laughs> being, being reminded to make sure that people uh, purchase. Uh, we've got physical copies of uh, the issue, which is, um, yeah, if they can follow the link in the chat to uh, purchase physical copies, then it's a beautiful edition, um, even if... I do so so myself. And again, I want to thank every single person who's contributed and the incredible volunteers at FO who helped us so much with transcriptions and, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. This is allyship in action. Um, you know, the humility of Naran has just, and patience is incredible. I, <laughs> you know, I've been a difficult editor. Um, but you know, sometimes you've got to be. 
I really want to acknowledge the patience and, uh, you know, the forbearance of everyone who contributed in, you know, dealing with my harassment of them as well. So, <laughs> um, you know, good wise, but, you know. <laughs> um, and, yeah, look, I suppose, yeah, so I just want to point everyone back to the digital edition. Um, did a incredible, um, we want to get a few more things up. Um, I neglected to mention, of course, we've got a incredible uh, interview with Kato Muir, who's um, a Nalia man who has been defending country uh, in what's called the gold province, the mineral provinces uh, of so called Western Australia. Um, and really encourage you to see what's happening with the lie of the transition minerals and how that's an orgy of destruction at the moment for moving away from fossil fuels, but, you know, destroying more and more and more country um, that, you know, more country sometimes than existing mining has already done and destroying rarer country, like more unbroken country is being destroyed than fossil fuels are destroying at the moment. So, you know, we've got to, we've got to find a way to decarbonise through degrowth. You know, we can't keep taking all this resource. We can't continue with all this extractivism. Um, also, I just want to point you to what he says about the fact that now that uh, critical minerals and transition minerals are now being taken over by the military. So this is what we're going to be looking at with a future issue of chain reaction of uh, looking into militarism. But the fact that it's now become a national security issue and Climate change is the biggest threat to not just national security, but to all human security around the planet. And societies are on their way to collapsing. You know, capitalism is going to fall over. So this is why the military are taking control of critical mining operations. They're building roads through the middle of the desert from um, Western Queensland all the way through to the gold fields. Uh, the the outback way, it's not a tourist drive. It's to open up mine after mine after mine by the companies who are sponsoring the voice. So, you, yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. There's a lot of reporting that needs to be done, and you know, really encourage so many people to to step up. Um, and just to remind people of all the links again, so. I uh, want everyone to be aware to donate to uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, his family fund. Um, and again, that's paypal.me, Johnny Wilson Sr., uh, all one word. Um, and I'm being told, okay, I don't need to write them out. But, um, but all the links will go into the chat and the links will be available on the website uh, as well. So. Um, we don't have a huge amount of questions. Um, so um, if anyone does have any questions, just quickly pop them up in the chat or, um, yeah, so. Oh, sorry, Nada? I, I just wanted to clarify really quickly because I know that there are some allies on here and there are some people who probably are looking for some answers around their vote um, in 11 days, I think it is. I've got the countdown mm. by the day on my calendar because I cannot wait until this is over. Um, mm. I just wanted to clarify really quickly that my no does not align with Warren Mundine and Justina Price's no. Um, I'm not going to sit and criticise them. They've got their own reasons. I don't have bad words to say about them. However, I'm not aligned with their movements and their reasons. Our reasons are completely different. My main being that this is not self-determination for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, putting our, you know, the right for Parliament to make decisions for us 
in the hands of the parliament and decide who gets to speak and you know everything else that we haven't we don't know the answer to yet um is basically why and also the fact that that statement from the heart says our sovereignty has never been ceded and it coexists with the sovereignty of the crown that to me is very very contradictory don't support it and there's also um the sovereignty is a spiritual notion sentence actually comes straight out of Africa and that's actually that's a fact so there's so many lies about this campaign one of the main being that this was created by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people there's literally a passage in it that comes from Africa so that's a lie 80% of Mm. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people support this that's a lie find me find me the poll where they actually polled a decent amount of people that aren't on the payroll um the statement from the heart Traditional owners from Ananu country said that they weren't allowed to use that. So the fact that they've even used that name in that is a breach of cultural protocol. Cultural protocol has been breached this entire process. We've had Linda Burney and others saying, this is what Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people want. I actually personally asked Minister Burney her, myself when I had a meeting with the Black Sovereign Movement and herself and Senator Malindira McCarthy, um, Marion Scrimmendar, if she could please stop saying that this is from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people because she doesn't have that cultural authority. She doesn't have the cultural authority to speak for me, and I told her so. Um, she has the authority to speak for herself only. So, hmm. um, And her mob, her clan group, if they've given her that permission, um, which where is her mob? Anyways, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I just, I'm just trying to put enough resources out there for people to find to make their own decision. I respect completely however people want to vote, but I think everyone should be entitled to all this information, especially the info from traditional owners that, you know, hasn't really been allowed to be widely distributed. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you. Um, Yeah, so we've got one question, I think, Um, (laughs) and that's kind of between... uh, it's for everyone, but um, particularly you and myself, Janetta. Um, Chris has asked, uh, he's wondering about media outlets or publications that we trust and the platform First Nations Voices. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I've, I'm more familiar with journalists that I trust because they do tend to move around sometimes. Um, Organisations can be hit and miss, you know, like Guardian. Mm. Sometimes they produce amazing stuff. Then the referendum starts and they just start peddling racist bullshit. Um, You know, ABC, absolutely loved them, used to trust them, used to be able to rely on their news because being a former ABC journo, I know that you are not allowed to publish anything unless it has been you know, confirmed by an official source. So mm. knowing that, and I've told um, people I've worked with at other organisations, look, if you're looking for something that you want to know is 100% true, go to ABC because they have to confirm it before they publish it. Whereas um, all the Murdoch papers, they will print anything. They will print anything. And I, I worked at a, a radio, I won't say which one, I worked at a radio station for a little bit. And this lady but my boss, my boss, scary right, used to pull stories straight from those Murdoch rags and read them in the bulletin. And I'm like, she made me read one one day about this person who was a pedo or something, but he died. So, it, you know, he's dead. He can't defend himself. And he, she's making me say that. And I like chucked allegedly in there at the end to cover my own ass legally. But I actually had to say to her, you need to check reliable sources, go to the police website and confirm this before you get in there reading it. We can get sued for that. What do you know? A couple of weeks later, we're getting sued. Anyways, it wasn't me. It was her on the station. So I didn't have to worry about that. But this is, it's crazy when you start to work in media and you start to learn these things. Sky News for starters should not be able to call themselves news because they are full of lies. Like, and I don't know how, in this country, they're allowed to get away with calling themselves a news source when they literally just peddle bullshit. Um, mm. I've got to say, 
I've got to say, I haven't, you know, fully, fully hated all of their stuff lately because they're one of the very few organisations pushing the no. But the unfortunate thing about it is they're pushing all the no for the wrong reasons, all the conspiracy theories and all the stuff that makes the no people sound freaking crazy. Um, so, you know, essentially, no, there is not one media organisation that I can name off the top of my head that I can go, this is who you can trust. But... I'd say familiarize yourself with journos. One that really pops up and, you know, front of my mind is Paul, Paul Gregoire. He writes for Sydney criminal lawyers. And when I read his art uh, every time, I swear every time I read his articles, it's like, we're just always on the same page with a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, like Benny Apatangelo, he's another one. He's a, he's a freelancer. So he writes for a fair few different people. Um, it's unfortunate because I'm, <laughs> oh, Amy McGuire, she's incredible. It's honestly yeah. ba- more more independence. Like you know, Amy, she's independent. Um, yeah, Benny as well. You will find journalists who have integrity are Why usually you penniless. Of- that that's that's the first part, hundred <laughs> percent. But um. They won't, you won't find them hanging around those big orgs for long because they can't handle it. You know, like I, I did. And we're gay see, kept out of it. That's the that other too. Point. That yeah. too. You know, I was, um, you know, when I worked for ABC, I was one of their best black journos. But you think they'd let, ever let me report on anything that wasn't to do with black fellas? Mm. It was like, um, excuse me, I can actually report on the weather. I can report on the the crash that happened down the road. Like I can report on stuff that isn't just, you know, the black fella stuff because, um, but yeah, anyways, so. Um, well, they don't even let you report on the uh, black fella stuff that's close to you either. And then the one, <laughs> like, well, the shooting at Yundamu happened when I lived out at Mbantua. So yeah. I was right there and do you think that they let me anywhere near that story with a 10 foot pole? I was kept away from it like a dog with rabies. Like it was so bad. Mm. Um, yeah. I, media's, uh, media can easily destroy a person. It nearly destroyed me. I, yeah. Um, I nearly let it. Um, thankfully I walked away before it got to that point, but it's, it's a really, it's, it's corrupt. Like they're hand in hand with politicians too. Um, once you get to know politics, you'll also get to know, you'll see who Dutton's favourite um, mm. media outlets are, whose elbows are because they're the ones that they favour. They call them they call them friendly media. But it's like I used to do this thing with the kids, the, the, like the school kids, and I had, you know, the business magazine and then I'd have like the land rights magazine and I'd say to them and I'd hold them both up and I'd say, you know, what, tell me what's, what can you see on this cover? Tell me about this cover and then tell me about this cover. And like I would say, explain to them every single piece of media you consume, whether it's printed, whether it's online, whether it's you're watching it on the TV is bias. It has been created by someone who has an opinion and a bias. And as you know, Nick, I think it was Nick that said, as journos, we know, you know, we're supposed to be impartial about this stuff, but we are human. People are human. We have an opinion. We have a view and we do have a natural bias. Um, So it's like the business magazine would have like a man in a business suit, real stiff, real boring, you know, and I'd say what, you know, and then the land rights mag could be all black fellas and it's this and that and the kids, like kids that explain and I'd say, you know, and that's because this one is created for black fellas, whereas this one's created for people in business who, you know, are looking for boring stories and blah, blah, blah. Um, mm-hmm. It's That's a great, you know, great example of how media is fully tailored to um, to an audience. And it's, it's, it's really the tactics that they use can be scary. And this referendum has been a perfect example because we've seen it. If you vote no, you're racist. Yet we have so mm. many people who are just want answers to their questions and I, it's so insulting and patronising that these poor people, you know, don't matter whether you're black or white, if you want answers to questions before you make a decision, that's your right to, that's your free, free prior and informed consent and we are, have, we are entitled to that. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. I'll stop now. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I suppose the key is, you know, we, we do have to look at uh, individual journalists because at the moment we're just, you know, we're a very loose collective of individual journalists um, and there's not a huge amount of this around. There's very few uh, investigative uh, journalists around and we've, we need to change that. As well, so um, I reckon we're going to pretty much wrap it up at the moment if everyone's cool. But um, I just want to ask Yaron if you've got anything more to add and close with, and also maybe uh, after that, just quickly from Danny as well. So, Yaron, are you there? Aha. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Um, yeah, just feeding my little munchkin. Um, um, no, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, that there's there's a lot to say about the voice, and um, that you know, it's it's something about um, you know the system and the way that they, um, the colonial system and the way that it's been portrayed, and and how it's happening, you know, straight after COVID. Um, it should be ringing everyone's alarm bells um, rather than this big divide of yes and no. Um, and, yeah, I think there was a lot of mistakes made um, more so here in Australia um, than the rest of the world when, you know, COVID was happening and the lockdowns were on and everything. And then now we have this, um, you know, voice um, referendum that, you know, um, my view is that it should have been before before our time. Like, this shouldn't be a debate in 2023. Like, um, and without sounding, you know, um, I guess to up myself or like an up myself black fella, you know, that we, I have been taught um, by my culture, you know, by my elders, um, and, you know, I'm a cultural woman, so that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the connection to country and that ancient identity um, and how we bring that forward into the future with these solutions for country. Um, so I'm coming from a place that we don't need a, a voice in that, in that way because we are entitled to so much more. Um, we have our birthrights and um, until those birthrights and identity are uh, understood and then acknowledged respectfully, um, you know, there can be um, a lot in, in learning about, you know, how to actually engage with um, so many different nations um, that make up First Nations across Australia. Um, because no other mob speaks for um, another mob. Um, that That is breaking cultural protocol that I was taught. And, you know, it, it's, it's hard when, you know, a lot of your elders, um, you know, believe in the yes. Um, a lot of peers and different people that you love and respect so much believe in the yes um, and it makes you want to believe. And it gives you this little inkling of hope, like could it, could it be um, it, this amazing thing that, um, you know, it's being made out to be. But um, while the mining companies are funding this, you know, I see anything from them um, as as a payout kind of thing. Um, they wouldn't be paying that out, um, it, you know, if it was a dent in their pockets to the profit that they're making off the land and the oceans, um, the you know, yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard basket, and um, I I stand in the middle. I stand in my truth and sovereignty, and within my birthrights of the people, um, you know, where my blood belongs to, um, and you know, part of that includes. Um, some of the Scottish Highlands um, where some of my family actually extend to. So, 
you know, I, I just wanted to say that everyone's got a place of belonging in um, protecting country and um, I hope that, you know, the voice or anything um, that's painted in a bad or different light, you know, for blackfellas, um, yeah, doesn't hinder anybody, um, you know, supporting our voices and our our you know, main causes about protecting country into the future. Yeah. And thank you all. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. I have to say as well, you know, my Ghana mob, my Kuan mob, and my Cornish mob, we, you know, we've all been the victims or survivors of extractivism. And, you know, it's... You know, it is easy to be suspicious of motivations of the colonisers, but there are so many allies. I mean, my own family were allies, and that's how they ended up coming the right way in this country. So, um, yeah, so I suppose, yeah, thank you, and thank you for everyone. Um, just wanted to and, say real quick, I put it, sorry, sorry, Nick. I put it in the yeah. chat, but I just wanted to say because that question earlier about who to trust. Um, yeah. Other media, oh, like politicians, they really can't be trusted. But Indigenous X is a page that will always let us mob write whatever we want. So if yeah. that helps in some way, Indigenous X is a, a good place to go if you're looking for information. Um, they've got some articles up about the referendum. I believe they've got, you know, stuff from both sides. I know other people are trying to do that, but they're not doing it sincerely. And ITV, I can tell you right now, they're pushing the yes. ABC are pushing the yes. <laughs> um, yeah, these government-funded places, they're all pushing yes. Government yeah. people are all pushing yes. Don't bother yeah. with them. They're compromised. They're sold out. We've also got an article from Indigenous X that's a reprint from Philip Mills about uh, the coloniality of medicine in this country and uh, modes of care that need to happen as, you know, practical practical sovereignty as well. So um, big shout out to Indigenous X all the time. So, yeah, any anything you want, get it from there. Um, thank you, Janetta. Uh, Joni, do you have any th uh, final words to say tonight? Just, um, yeah, there we go. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone and all the stories. Um, my two sisters there speaking. It's really strong of you two. Um, really touching. Thank you to everyone who's watching. I hope everyone has a good night and um, keep fighting. Don't give up. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. And I just want to say I'm so sorry for your loss. Sending my biggest love and heartfelt <laughs> condolences to you and your family. Um, thank you for your words before. They meant a lot as well. Very powerful. And thank you for letting us continue to pu publish Mr. Wilson's story because yeah, it just wouldn't have been the same. So thank you, and we'll, we'll keep fighting in his honour for sure. Thanks, sis. Yeah, You're absolutely. Same. Thank you, sis. Thank you very much. Thank you, sis. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, I think if there's any questions, I mean, we could always, I don't know, if someone wants to wave to the screen if they want to ask a uh, question otherwise we'll we'll wrap it up um yeah no no waves at the moment i just want to uh, say a big thank you to nick like what a mammoth effort you have put in to make this labor of love possible you literally it is it's it's a birthed creation and you have gone you. so many hours of labor to make it happen and thanks to that so. yeah <laughs> all, all of that all of that so yeah yeah just just big hugs and big love for that and 
Like, Thank like, you, Maron. And <laughs> right back at you. Right black at you. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. You're a legend. Thank you. Everyone is. Thank you. All right. You, you, well, you, you fixed my writer's block. <laughs> Awesome. Well, let's keep it keep it running. We'll do traveling, shit stirring journalism. <laughs> let's do it. From <laughs> um, All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we'll close it and um, we'll put some video up on this uh, with everyone's permission. I'm assuming um, yeah. to um, have as a I don't know, YouTube or something, but the link will go up on the website uh, when when we upload it. So thank you. Everyone stay strong, keep resisting, and uh, all you beautiful allies, thank you so much, and we hope to see you on country. We hope to see you in the streets. We hope to see you out protecting Goodnitz Mara country uh, on what date was it again, Yaren? Uh, the 22nd of this month. The 22nd of October. We want everyone down in Warrnambool, yeah? Yeah, yep. Come to Goodnitz Mara country in Warrnambool at the breakwater at 2 p.m. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, sisters, and, yeah, thank you, everyone. What a Everybody look after yourself, especially in this next 11 days. It's going to be hectic. Yes. Yep. And, you know, anyone needs to yarn, just, you know, reach out. So, yeah. Yeah, same here. All right. Knocking you. Yeah, Mob. Really. Love, everybody. Thank you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. I do that every time. How do I get off now? <laughs> yeah, likewise. Um, I don't, I can I don't think I'm the moderator. <laughs> okay. How do we do this? You close it off and... Yeah. Do you want to close it off? Yeah, okay. you've done it? Or... No, I will. Awesome. I no, I can do it right now. Okay. Big love. And thanks so much, Janetta. Your article is incredible. Such a privilege to read it. Oh, thank you. Such an honour. It was um, honestly an honour to write with so many deadly people. So, yeah. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Awesome.